All right, so in this example, basically what they're asking you to do is to go ahead and find, uh, to go ahead and graph it, right? Number 10, right? You're supposed to graph it? OK, so basically, ladies and gentlemen, you could complete the square like we talked about uh, last class period. You would factor out the negative, you would group them, factor out the negative 1, do b divided by 2 squared, add it inside, subtract it outside, and then go ahead and find, put it in vertex form. However, another method that we can use is basically just to find the axis of symmetry. If you remember, our new formula that I wrote down for you is opposite of b divided by 2 times a. Now remember, standard form is an ax squared plus bx plus c. So, op so my b is negative 10, not negative 10x. b is the number in front of x. So, so opposite of b would be a positive 10 divided by 2 times a, which is negative 1. Everybody agree with me? a is negative 1. b is negative t Opposite of b is 10. So therefore, this gives you negative 5. Oops. It's x equals. So therefore, my axis of symmetry is x equals negative 5. So if I was going to go ahead and graph this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'd go ahead and draw a nice little vertical line at x equals negative 5. Now, the next thing we need to do is find the, uh, find the vertex. And if you remember from last class period, one thing I'd really try to have you guys focus on is the vertex lies on the axis of symmetry. right? So if you were to think about this using like a table, here's your x and y points. A lot of students always have trouble with saying, you know, how do you know which points to plug in for x? You know, and, and a lot of times, in typical examples, we use negative, negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2. Well, in this case, just like we talked about when we did absolute value, you always want to make sure that you start with the, verta with the um, vertex, which lies on the axis symmetry. So I'm going to use negative 5. That's the x-coordinate of the vertex. Since the vertex lies on the axis symmetry, I know the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative 5. Now I just need to find the y-coordinate. So to find the y-coordinate, I plug negative 5 in for x. So I'll go over here. And basically, in the math notation, we write that as f of 5. I know we haven't talked about that in this class. Squared minus 10 times 5 minus 3. All right. So basically, what you're doing is you're plugging in the, x, the x-coordinate in for x. So in this case, it has 5 squared, right? Using the order of operations, you square the 5, which is 25, times negative 1 is negative 25. Um, then you have negative 10 times 5 is a negative 50, and then minus 3. So that's going to be a negative 78. Wow. Okay, so let's go by um, tens. So here I went by ones. So let's go by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. I can create whatever scaling I want to. So, because it doesn't give you any scaling part, right? Which number 10, what does it have? OK. Oh, that's not the right. Oh, it's, it's minus, minus 30. 30. Five. Oh, it is negative. No wonder. I was like, man, this is like crazy. OK. So that becomes a positive. That's negative 30. All right. So never mind. Sorry about that. So that's negative 5 squared is still positive 25. Positive 25 times negative is still a negative 25, right? Negative 10 times negative 5 is positive 50. And then you have negative 30. All right, that makes sense. So now we know that my y coordinate is negative 5. So when x equals negative 5, I get negative 5 out. That is my vertex. Yes? Now let's just look by inspection. Do we know, is this graph going to open up or open down? down because it's negative. So we know the graph is being reflected about the x-axis. So the graph opens down. Therefore, if the graph opens down, is this vertex going to be a max or a min? Max. So we can just help each other out. You didn't have to write. I don't think they asked for that, but just to practice. Um, 
OK, so then I go negative 5. I go negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that is my vertex. So the red line's the axis symmetry, black line's the vertex. Now, basically, to go ahead and find the rest of the points, um, you guys should know that since my a is 1, is there any compression or stretching? Is there any compression or stretching? No. So get therefore, it follows the same pattern of over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4. But since it's being reflected, it's going to be over 1, down 1, over 2, down 4. If you don't remember that, you can always go back to finding two points to the left or finding two points to the right and then plugging them in. So let's plug in these points just to, let's pretend you don't remember what the graph should look like. So you need to pick points. Pick points that are right next to the axis symmetry. And don't pick points to the right and the left. Just pick points to one side, because then you can use the um, axis of symmetry to reflect the points. Because remember, the axis symmetry cuts the parabola in half. So let's just do, let's do um, negative 4. Negative 4, I get negative 16 plus 40 minus 30. So that gives me a negative 6. So I go negative 4. Now I'm going to go down to negative 6. And then let's do negative 3. So I have negative, negative 3 squared minus 10 times negative 3 minus 30. That equals negative 9 plus 30 minus 30. So at negative 3, I go down to negative 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And what I just want to remind you guys is if that's half of it, rather than having to plug in these two points, I know that they are just reflections about the y-axis. And there you go. That's my parabola. Ta-da. Nobody's oh, uh, a little tired. Oh, it's OK. OK. Yes? What do you mean by stretching compression? 